Hey everybody, hope you're doing great today. In this video, I'm gonna talk about lawsuits and why they are a losing proposition. Now, lawsuits are helpful for a particular reason. You get injured, somebody causes damage to your property. Yes, you need to go, you need to go and sue them to recover money. So at the same time too, the cost to file those lawsuits are quite high. The minimum amount of money you need to pay an attorney to start that process is around two to $4,000, and that's just the start. Typically, the attorney is going to bill off that retainer as the lawsuit progresses. As that retainer fund goes down, you'll be required to put in more money to make sure that the attorney has enough that they can draw on for continuing work on the lawsuit. So getting sued will be a big sap on your wealth. It will affect your wealth. Whether you win or lose, the cost to defend a lawsuit is pretty high. Some states do have a rule which provides that the losing side will pay for the winning side's attorney's fees and costs, and that's gonna vary on a case-by-case -case situation, so don't count on it. So even if the losing side does pay the winning side's legal fees, there's still a lot of things that won't be recovered in that process. There's the time involved that anybody involved in a lawsuit has to spend on that case, whether it's going to court, whether it's sitting down with your attorney, chatting with your attorney, sitting through depositions, and just the overall stress that a lawsuit can cause. Yes, there are some attorneys who will take cases on a contingency basis, and what that means is they will take a cut of the winnings if there are winnings. If there are not winnings, obviously not paid on that sense, but it also depends on their fee agreement. Still charging an hourly rate, they're still charging costs, so you need to look at the attorney agreement, the fee agreement that you're going to be signing with that attorney before you have them take on that case. Now, not every attorney is going to take on a case in contingency format because the contingency involves a lot of risk, both on the part of the person filing the lawsuit as well as the attorney themselves. The attorney doesn't want to spend all that time, do all that work if they know the case is not a clear winner. They will do their own calculations and their own determinations to see if that case is a winner or not. Now, they're not looking for a case that you know they know is 100% winner, but if they think they can get to a certain point, it's going to depend attorney by attorney, law firm by law firm. Some firms do it, some firms do not do it. It'll depend on the case type as well. Some attorneys will tell you up front that a case is unwinnable. The merits of the case are that great. We don't think it's a winning case. Here's why. And it's nothing personal. It's just that they need to account for their time. They need to bill for their time. They need to earn their, their money. And by taking on a case that they don't think is a winner, that's not an effective use of their time. So it's the legal system that really benefits when lawsuits are filed. So that's not to say don't file a lawsuit. If you do have a legitimate case, always talk to your attorney. Do it sooner rather than later. As time goes on, memories fade, and there are statute of limitations laws which basically state if you don't file a lawsuit within such amount of time, you lose your right to file that lawsuit later on down the line. Here's an article from the University of Denver. This is published in 2013, so it's a number of years ago, but as you can guess, the costs have only gone up. It talks about the average fees that somebody can expect for filing a lawsuit. So in this case here, they talk about a simple automobile case, for example, in an automobile accident, that can be quickly be resolved after filing the case, and that's assuming before trial, and you're looking at $10,000 in fees or less. Now, if the case does go to trial, the fees go up to $100,000 per side, which can be pretty costly. So in this article right here, they interviewed attorneys and they note that the attorneys who responded noted that they regularly turn away cases when it's not cost effective to litigate them with $100,000 being the medium amount in controversy cited as that level where they don't think it's not worth their time. So this article was published in 2013. So obviously the numbers were lower back then. They're gonna be much higher today. So that's something to look at when considering filing a lawsuit. Here's an example of attorney average hourly billing rate. So some attorneys will take on cases on an hourly basis. If they're not sure that the case is a strong case, but they're willing to take on the case, they won't do it on a contingent fee, but they'll charge you an hourly basis. As stated earlier, they will require a retainer fee put up front just to make sure that there's money to bill off of. So not only are you paying an hourly rate for those attorneys, you're also paying their costs as well too cost of printing, court filing costs, any service of process costs, anything basically that the attorney needs to acquire, needs to bill for in order to move forward with the case. So these numbers here are from 2020, and as you can see, Washington DC, average law firm rate, $342, average attorney rate, $380. Have on the low end, Florida average rate, average law firm rate, $262 an hour, and average lawyer rate of $294 an hour. So depending on your state, the attorney's fees will, might be lower, they might be higher. So while I am an attorney, I'm not a litigation attorney. I do work with a number of litigation attorneys and I'm familiar with how they work. If you do have litigation questions, you need to discuss those litigation questions with a local attorney as each state has their own different rules and regulations that cover litigation, what you can file, what the limits are, what the statutes of limitations are. So talk with a local attorney for assistance with those matters. Many states have small claims court and in a small claims court, you can file without the help of an attorney. So when filing a small claims court, you need to look at what the limit is. For example, where I live, the small claims limit is $6,000. 
which means if the value of your claim is higher than $6,000, you can't use a small claims court, you'd have to use a regular court. Anything 6,000 and below, you can file on your own. The magistrates in those courts will work to help you out so you don't need an attorney, but generally all the rules of evidence and all the requirements will apply as if it were a regular court case. You can't just go into the small claims court and say, hey, I need $6,000 from this individual, this company, without proving your case too. You also need to look at the contracts that govern the relationship that you have to see whether you have the ability to file a lawsuit or not. A lot of large corporate contracts will require arbitration rather than lawsuits because arbitration is cheaper, it's quicker compared to a full, full blown lawsuit. So always read your contracts, check in there. Is there an arbitration clause in that contract? Are you fine with that arbitration clause? Consult with an attorney as well to see what your rights are. If you do find yourself the subject of a lawsuit, the best thing to do is work with an attorney as soon as possible. Don't wait until the last minute. As noted earlier, there are a lot of time frames involved. You miss those time frames, and a court can rule against you automatically, put you in default, you lose, and that's not the situation you want to be in. Here's some tips to protect your wealth from a lawsuit. If you're a business, you should always sit down with an attorney, have them design your contracts, have them design the rules and regulations that govern your business. So similarly, as I mentioned before, with a contracts, some of them have arbitration clauses in there. That might be in your best interest to have an arbitration clause. That way, if one of your clients or one of your customers sues you under the terms of the contract, you can go to arbitration rather than full-blown lawsuit, whereas arbitration will cost less compared to a, a lawsuit. So as with anything on the legal side, an ounce of prevention is worth a pound of cure. So as that small business owner, you need to, meet, you need to make sure you have an, a regular attorney that you work with, keep them aware of your business practices, any changes in business practices, as well as employment practices. That way you can limit or reduce the risks of having a lawsuit filed against you. Other things to do as a small business is look at things like insurance policies. Do you have an umbrella insurance policy? Do you have the proper errors and emissions insurance policies depending on what type of business you are. So in that type of situation, you need to sit down with your insurance agent, explain to them your business, what you do, everything you do it, how it's done, and then ask them to provide you the proper insurance policies to cover you in all those situations. An umbrella insurance policy is an important policy to have as well too. That increases the coverage of all your other insurance policies. That way, if you are faced with a lawsuit that ends up in a large verdict against you, that umbrella policy can step in and can go above any of the other insurance policy limits that you might have already have in place. Especially as a small business or business, look into putting your assets into an LLC, corporation, a trust, something where you can shield those assets. That way, if the business is sued, the business assets are within that LLC, your personal assets are separate, and they won't go after your personal assets. Again, that's something you definitely need to sit down with a business attorney, have them plan that out for you, have them set up any trusts, any LLCs, corporations, because if they're not set up properly, courts can turn around and say, you didn't set those up properly, they were set up just for show. They can say, then those those don't exist, and they'll then basically all of your assets are considered fair game for the lawsuit judgment. As an individual to protect yourself from lawsuits, there's always the risk somebody sues you for whatever reason, you're involved in a car accident, they're gonna turn around and sue you. You need to make sure your insurance policies are up to date, your homeowner's insurance, your car insurance, they're not only up to date, but they, they have the full coverages available. Also look into an umbrella policy. Umbrella policy is not just for businesses, it can also be for individuals, especially if you have higher risk levels, depending on the nature of your work. An umbrella policy on a yearly basis is not that expensive, the coverage you get from that policy is very beneficial. If you do get sued, it's gonna cover you, it's gonna protect your wealth. And a lot of those insurance policies have the provisions, conditions in there that if you are sued, that the company is either going to help pay for the attorney to defend that lawsuit, or they will hire the attorney and defend the lawsuit against you. As an individual too, look at things like trusts for your assets, look at things like LLCs for your assets. Depending on how the assets are set up, If, for example, if you have a mortgage, on your house, the ability to put an LLC is a little more tricky, can be done, that doesn't mean you should do it, there are some risks involved. Again, that's something you need to sit down with your attorney, ask them about a dual on sale clause with your mortgage, does that impact you? Whereas if your home is free and clear, you don't have a mortgage on it, you purchased with cash or you paid off your mortgage, putting that home in an LLC is easy to do and it, and it will help protect your asset there. If you own any small business, same thing, have a separate LLC as mentioned before. If you own any rental real estate, put that in a separate LLC if your lender will allow that. That way you're segmenting your assets, you're, you're keeping them in different pools and those pools, as long as those LLCs or corporations or whatnot are set up properly, those will protect each of those assets and protect your wealth as a result. For the individual, there are other things that can protect your home, such as the homestead exemption. The amount of the homestead exemption varies state by state. So again, you need to consult with a local attorney to see 
what applies to you and what doesn't apply to you. If the homestead exemption is low for you, you might want to consider other situations, other ways to protect that asset. Generally things like trusts, if you've got assets in a trust, they're for the benefit of somebody else. It's been set up properly by an attorney. Those can be protected as well from lawsuits. Retirement plans, 401ks, defined benefit plans, those types of plans that are qualified under the Internal Revenue Code are also generally protected from lawsuits. So protection from lawsuits is not a go it alone approach. The best bet is to sit down with an attorney, have them draw up estate plans, have them draw up trust plans, have them draw up LLCs, corporations for you, whatever you need to do to set up your assets, put your wealth in different pockets, at different pools. That way those assets are protected from one lawsuit that, that attempts to go after all of your assets to satisfy any claims. Hope that was helpful for you. If you have any questions, feel free to drop them in the comments below. Thank you again for watching and I will see you in the next video.